Hello, everybody. It's 10-10-10, Joe. It sure is. It's pretty awesome. Yep. That's, um, that's like a super, that's like a super day in, um, in geekdom. Is it? Well, not only is it kind of cool because it's 10-10-10, but, uh, in binary, 10-10-10 is 42. Really? Yes. So that's the. Uh, I did hmm? see that someone posted that on Twitter. Someone just posted forty-two, and I was like, "Oh, okay, there's someone who's quoting the trifids." But probably they were actually referring to today's date. I'm still hearing the song. Yeah, I left it. I left it down in the background. Oh, okay, nice. All right, that's cool. Let it play out. That's a Light Sweet Crude by the Obits. That's a, a Brooklyn band. I was going to say a local band, but they're not local to me anymore. They're local to you, Joe. They are. Oh, and today's episode is sponsored by Cyberdyne Systems, the Skynet division. <laughs> they are the future. Excellent. So, first thing I want to talk to you about. Is Yo. I was reading about this thing, right? And you know, Google is taking over the world. It's yes, they are. I've noticed. And I was reading this article that they're doing something very cool. And they've got these Priuses, which are hybrid car, hybrid Toyotas. Right. And they, they've attached gadgets to these Priuses. They put um, radar on the roof and they put cameras on the rear view mirrors and the front facing radar and they put all these these things on the cars because they've they they claim that they've driven they, these cars have driven themselves for 140,000 total miles with without any uh, there, there's some occasional human control but a thousand of those miles without any human intervention None at all. None at all. And, and the cars are like, uh, they always have a driver behind the wheel in case of emergency, and there's always an engineer to make sure the network stays running. But there apparently hasn't been any accidents except one got rear-ended by some idiot. <laughs> and and my, prop, my thing about this, the reason why I brought it up, is because most people use Google as a search engine, right? So Google knows where we search from because they, they know our IP addresses generally and so they'll know where we are when we're doing our searches. Right. They know what we're searching for. They know who you're calling if you have an Android phone, which is a good percentage of smartphone people nowadays have Android phones, including you. I have, a, I have an Android phone. See? So they know who you call. They know they where do. you go. You have a GPS in that thing. It's usually off though because like the Android phone is a uh, – man, that, that thing kills your battery. But yes – they potentially could know where you go. I guess the FBI has the ability to know where you go no matter what you, whatever that kind of phone you have. They just turn on their GPSs from wherever they are. But anyway, let's assume Google doesn't do that. Okay. They, but they can figure, they can know where you are, especially if you're making calls. They can triangulate where you are just from cell towers and stuff like that. Sure. Now they're going to be driving our cars for us. The, our cars are going to connect to their network, use Google Maps, use um, GPS, and they're going to drive for us. All of those things together lead me to believe that Google is evil, and when they become <laughs> autonomous and, uh, and you know, gain sentience, it will be the end of the world, and we will all die. You don't, you don't trust Google? I don't, you know, I use them for my search, and I have several, web, I have a I have a blogger page that's Google, and I use, you know, for, I use the their um, RSS feed generator, whatever that's called. I don't know. And uh, I have I use Gmail. I don't have a Google phone. I'm an iPhone guy, but I think that they, as much as they claim they're not evil, are evil. I'd say they're not as evil as like the Galactic Empire, but yeah, you know, it's like they're not they're not benign. They're, it's not a good thing. There's a little too much Google. I mean, I still love Google. I, I've been seduced by the dark side. I've got my Google phone. I'll get my Google car. What, what are they going to call that when, when it's uh, 
when it's officially in beta beta for like people is that like could be like mother in law beta? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, there's no, you know. And they say within eight years these will be usable by real people in real cars. And I mean they claim that they they, they are hoping that when they are all on the road, they can cut the number of uh, accidents Killings and accidents, which is 1.2 million people a year, in half, because they are smarter than us. Wait, 1.2 million people Deaths get in cut in half each year? Yeah, it will be half each in, year. In auto accidents? Yeah. <laughs> cut in half. Cut in half. They say that they can half the number of accidents on the roads. Oh, the number of accidents, not the. I thought maybe the victims were being cut in half. In no. the, in the, I mean, some of them probably are. It's probably not a funny subject, actually. I should probably not joke about that. Probably. <laughs> I'm sick. I can get away with that, though. <laughs> you hear that? I heard you. I heard it. Well, you know, one good thing, I was thinking about this, not about the, the car, but I was thinking about this earlier this week, why we don't have the flying car yet. Because, you know, everyone said it. It's been said a million times. Everybody's been complaining. We were promised a flying car by the Jetsons, by anyone who talked about the future when I was a kid said we'd have flying cars. Look at people driving today. Would you want these motherfuckers flying their cars? I sure don't. Definitely not. So, you know, maybe this Google thing, though, I mean, if the cars can drive themselves, they can fly themselves. We might be one step closer to the flying car. I am okay with Google doing this. Okay. If I'm going to get a flying car. <laughs> I think you're probably right, but Definitely, if they flew the car first. I, I, pro I, wouldn't, I would get one. I'm not saying that I won't, just like I have a Gmail and I use their search. Uh, I, won't get a, I won't get a Google phone. I, I won't step over that line. <laughs> I, am, I am firmly anti-Android phones, but that's just my personal decision. I'm right. prejudiced. And, you know, you're an, you're an Apple guy. You're a Mac guy. I am. Yeah, it works for me. You know, I have my Apple TV. As cool as I thought, the, the, I don't know if you heard any of the announcements about the Google TV thing, but as cool as I think Google TV looks, I, I won't buy it. I hear, I hear that it's absolutely awesome. Like, if you look past all the shit that sucks, <laughs> I hear it's fucking awesome. I hear if you can get it to work and you look past all the shitty stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, well, the shittiest part for me is that it costs 300 bucks. Yeah. Um, as much as I spend on gadgets, that kind of thing. And the, the, the thing that wouldn't work for me, um, for anyone who doesn't know, it's like a, um, a, you plug it into your TV, it goes between your cable box and your TV so that it kind of overlays your cable box. And uh, you can search basically like you're searching on Google, except the search results will give you web pages as well as TV shows in your, in your TV guide. So let's say you look for Magnum PI uh, it'll show you if there's episodes available on Netflix. It'll show you if there's episodes available on your TV guide. It'll show you basically wherever you can find Magnum PI. And then you can click on it and go watch it. You could also surf the internet on it. It's got a full browser and all that stuff. But that's the part that I like best. The other stuff is okay. I can, you know, look for things on Netflix with my Apple TV or many other ways. Right. But the, the cert using, being able to go just use the internet on the TV is kind of cool to me. But Jen would never allow it. Jen would be like, get the <laughs> thing off my screen. I want to watch TV. I just want to watch Criminal Minds. Why do you have to, what are you looking up? Put up, Get up your <laughs> iPad. That's what you have an iPad for. So you can surf the net while you watch TV and while I watch TV, and it doesn't irritate me at all. So th that's one of the reasons why it's just not for me. But uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people might buy this. The Apple TV or the Google TV? That was the, I was talking about the Google TV. The you know, I, I, and, all right, as much as I love Google, I mean, you know, and I kid when I say once you get past everything that sucks, I hear it's awesome. I mean, I really hear it sucks. So I'm really hoping that nobody buys it because, you know, they should, they should come out with a decent product. You know, don't, don't throw some piece of shit together, slap your Google name on it and think that people are going to come running just because we like your phones and your web engine, your search engine, I mean. I mean, if you, you know, play, if you had, if you could play games or use the apps that you use on your Android phone on a TV, would you? Is that something that you'd want to be able to do? No. 
I can do some of that on my Xbox. There's like Twitter on the Xbox. There's the Facebook on the Xbox. And I, I don't see the. Have you seen the Best Buy commercial with the TV with all the apps built in? Yeah. And the guy says, now you can tell people, hey, I just tweeted from my couch. I'm like, motherfucker, I've been tweeting from my couch for five years now. <laughs> it's true. I, and you I get really. To that, you get to that same problem with anyone else in the room. They're like, why are you doing that? I'm trying to watch television. Exactly. If if you're a lonely person, you live alone, you know, it'd probably be good to do all of your internet on your TV at all times, but And what are you are you using a remote control? Like are you it, it, it's it, a remote control is a full-size wireless keyboard with a with a little pad on the a touchpad on the side of it. So your TV remote is now a full-size Wi-Fi keyboard. It's just uh, something else to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, tough to lose something that big, though. Uh, it gets stuck in between the, the couch, especially if you got the couch with the folds out and it's going to break in half. And uh, it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick, can you tell? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to go in for the, for the Google TV, you know, even if it was something I could afford. Um, not until I hear better things about it. I, I'm happy with my Xbox TV and my computer. I've got Play On. Have you heard of this? Yes. I have play on on my computer. Um, I got it, I think, from Yugster. Okay. At a uh, lifetime subscription for like mad cheap, so I picked That's, it up. There's an iPhone it's, play on app now that you can do the same similar things from your iPhone or iPad. Like throw, yep. You just toss it to your TV. It's kind of cool. I'm waiting for the for the Android app, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not out yet. It'll come. You know, the uh, any smart developer is developing for Android. It's it's been huge, so it'll get there. It took longer yeah. than iPhone because iPhone was first. But. I'm still waiting for Blaster for Android. Sci-Fi Blaster. Yeah, yeah, I, I've used it. I've used it. I, I, I do it on the i I do it on my i Touch, my iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. I have the Blaster application. Sure. But you know, it's like it, this is an iPod Touch, so I've got to be someplace where I've got like a Wi-Fi signal. So this is like this is this is toilet reading. <laughs> this is what I bring with me when I wake up in the morning. I bring my iPod Touch in with me. And I catch up on all the important news. Like I catch up on Blaster, uh, device. You, do you do you follow device on the iPhone? That's the. Uh, it's it's the same thing. It's the uh, you know sci fis but it's gadgets. Okay, uh, do I don't I don't actually use either of the apps because I subscribe using a RSS reader to both of those RSS feeds. So I suck them in on my reader and I get them all in one place, all my different feeds. See, I could probably do that on the Android phone now with an RSS feeder, but I'm lazy. But <laughs> I, I want the Blaster app, but yeah, it's a, it was a good app. I remember when I used it before I started with the uh, with the RSS. And it's Blastar. Blastar, kind of like Sci-Fi is completely spelled incorrectly. Also, Sif Siffy. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a venereal disease. <laughs> Siffy. I. I but you know, people people don't seem to have minded that change. And the, I mean, everybody railed against it, and then you know, once the change happened, I haven't heard nothing since. Nobody's complained. Yeah, I haven't noticed any complaints either. It seems like everybody just took it in stride. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. But you know, I, I watch a lot of the sci-fi shows, so I mean, you know, I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. If it wasn't for sci-fi, I'd be watching Glenn Beck or something. No, 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 never. But uh, do you watch? Do you watch any of the sci-fi shows? I watch Eureka. Excellent show. Which I've watched since the beginning. Since oh, I guess all of them I watched since the beginning. I watched Warehouse Thirteen. Another excellent show. Yeah, I like them both, and I like Haven, which is a Stephen King, um, based on Stephen King. I have not watched it yet. They renewed it for a second season, so if you're somewhat interested, you should catch up on them at some point. I'm very interested. I just haven't had time. I'm trying to catch up on all the other TV that I do watch. Mm. And I was like, something new. I know I can f catch it on the Hulu. Yeah. I'm one of those suckers that pay 10 bucks for Hulu. I pay too. Oh, do you? Yep. I, I, I no longer feel like as much of a sucker. <laughs> so now I can watch the entire season when, when I'm ready. Yeah, I have the As Hulu opposed Plus. to just the last five. The reason why I have the Hulu Plus is because like, it's the only way to get Hulu on my iPad or my iPhone is by paying regular Hulu doesn't work on either. Yeah, I got I got the Hulu Plus because I live with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have time to watch all the shows I like Haven. Yeah. 
Um, Warehouse 13 was also renewed. Um, for the I saw that. Time. I'm very very excited about that. They left it on a cliffhanger. Not really a cliffhanger. They just left it on that, like Empire Strikes Back kind of note. A sp- possible spoiler if any of you watch like Warehouse 13, you haven't seen the end yet. Like Michael leaves at the end of the last episode. Yeah, she yeah. wanders off. She goes. She just roams away. And uh, Luke and Leia comfort each other, and the bots look on as. <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike and Chewbacca zoom off in the Millennium Falcon. It was a very Empire Strikes Back kind of sad. Not a cliffhanger, but she'll be back. They got the Christmas episode. She's got to be back in the Christmas episode. Yeah, I think she'll be back. I didn't notice in the article if she was down as um, if she's on there for next season. But I don't. Maybe they wouldn't do that because it would give it away. But um, I'm sure she'll be back. She'll be back. Like she's got anything else to do. Exactly. Who is she anyway? I don't even know her real name. I don't know. She's nobody. Just she's Micah. But that, I love I love the Warehouse Thirteen though. That's one of those shows that you know when I first heard about the premise, like you know I, I mocked it before I watched it, and I was like, oh, Warehouse Warehouse the Thirteenth, the series. You know, <laughs> each week there's going to be a you know a haunted artifact, and we're we're gonna, but this time it's for the government as opposed to the um, the antique dealer. Dealing with a stolen evil artifact. Remember that series, the Friday the Thirteenth series? Of course, I had the same thought when I first saw the, the the preview or whatever you want to call it for this for the show. But it, it was so much better than than I than I thought it was going to be. I really do enjoy the Warehouse Thirteen. I've been enjoying it too. It's a good show. The uh, what what else you're watching on? You, um, I don't think you're watching the Caprica. You're not watching the Caprica, are you? No, because I never watched Battlestar. I, you never watched Battlestar. No, I, I watched like the first episode, maybe the first two, and then it, I don't know, it got lost in life somewhere. So okay, but now Fair. it's all available on the Netflix. It is available on the Netflix. I can catch up on the Netflix streaming on my Apple TV. Battle, Battlestar was awesome. Uh, Caprica so far is pretty good. I have yet to watch whatever this season is. I don't know if it's the second half. Of the, se- the way they split seasons up on sci-fi is just kind of silly. I don't know if this is the second half of season one or if this is officially season two. Because, you know, it depends on the show. I have no idea. Well, uh, I, it's, I know, it's I back. When, I know when I've looked up Battlestar to try and catch up, it's a whole convoluted season 1A, 1B, and then there's... Episode, two hour movies in between some stuff and it was very confusing to figure out that too yeah and the the whole and that's and that's how they sell it now man they'll sell you like half of a season for like 50 bucks the same price they're selling an entire season of some other show for that's how they get you yeah Battlestar Galactica season 1.0 then you gotta buy 1.5 it's definitely how they get you they fuck you that's... at the drive-thru <laughs> they fuck you at the drive-thru uh, but you've been watching uh, they, I haven't seen this on sci-fi in a while but you've been watching the, uh, the Doctor Who right? I've been trying to catch up on at least the modern refreshing of the series the, the one that's like five or six seasons back um, BBC with the new you know with the side with the girl the girl so there was never a girl in the old ones um, no there, there was a girl was there? yeah I don't, all I remember is the guy with the long scarf that's how long ago. That was the uh, that was the fourth doctor. Really? Yeah. I could go on about this. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the fourth doctor. Okay. The doctor you started with was the uh, was the ninth doctor. That was uh, Chris Frackleston. Right. Star right. star of GI Joe. And and uh, Gone in sixty seconds. He was the bad guy. Was he? I've never seen Gone in sixty seconds. He was the villain. That movie was just below The Godfather in my list of movies I should probably see before this decade was out. And I did see The Godfather, but I, I didn't get around to The Gone in 60 Seconds. That was the Nick Cage one, right? Yeah, I kind of like the movie. I like oh, I like the cars. It's kind of a cool movie. It's all right. Yeah, I didn't see that one. But yeah, Christopher Eccleston, he, he was a great doctor. One season. Yeah, the next which... doctor after him was the, was the guy from the Harry Potter movies. Yes, he Barty was, Crouch. He played Barty Crouch's son or something like that, or whatever. Little Crouch. 
That was the first thing my mother noticed when I was watching the Doctor Who at her house. She was like, that's Barty Crouch. <laughs> Leave it to my mom to figure that one out. I mean, she, she knows. She knows her Harry Potter. Well, I'm only a couple episodes into that one. I'm not far. I really don't have time. Now that TV's back, I'm, I'm watching junk on regular TV, and, you know, we have a f the baby, and it's impossible to catch up on any extra TV. I try watching at work when I'm slow at work. My father doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, the Doctor Who's good is, uh, I I'm getting a, um, I'm getting a message that, that people are having trouble hearing you. Yeah, I saw, she, I saw she posted in the room. I moved closer to the mic and I adjusted my position. Mary Ellen, I think it's you because I hear Jeff fine. Of course. See? Of course, I'm listening to you. Am I, am I listening to I'm list, not listening to you on the Ustream at the moment, though. Um, no, but both of our feeds are going through my machine into the Ustream. But it's possible I was low. I, I raised myself. Excellent. I, I, you, I think you probably got raised, too, in the process, but whatever. <laughs> We're not professionals here. It's episode two, for Christ's sake. Yeah, give us a break. Mary Ellen, get off our backs. <laughs> oh, I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a, Mary Ellen's going to be a guest on next week's show, perhaps. Excellent. Because I will be in Florida. That's right. You're going to have your first road episode. Yep. On the road. Florida. We can talk about how bad Florida sucks. <laughs> I mean, unless you like it. Because, you know, they, they, they really like Florida. I, you know, I will only go to Florida because they're there. I couldn't take the heat in the summer. Oh, it's terrible. It's got to be. It's, it's more oppressive than Google. <laughs> fucking Google people. Uh, They're trying to kill me. Them and the Facebookers. I saw the Facebook movie last night. I, you know, I wanted to see. I saw that you guys were going to go see the movie, and I said I should probably try and go see the movie this weekend, so we could talk about it. And I was deathly ill all weekend. Now I'm only mostly deathly ill. Yeah, it was a good movie. It's like mostly dead. It was a good movie. Good. Good acting, good story. I mean, it was based on truth, I suppose. But Zuckerberg, that Zuckerberg is a dick. Is he? In, like, real life or just yeah. in the movie? Well, I'm guessing both since, you know, his dickiness is what based what the movie was all based on, how he right. basically stole the idea or, or somewhat stole the idea from these other two guys for Facebook. And then his business partner, the only one who believed in him and gave him money to start the business... He screwed him out of it. As soon as the, uh, as soon as the scumbag from Napster wanted in, he dumped him for uh, for the scumbag that started Napster. I don't remember, like Sean something. I used to know his name. I used to know all their names back when I paid attention to these things. Yeah. So basically, so Zuckerberg, like, he defriended these people. <laughs> he or they defriended him. One or the other. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he... he the guy had thirty percent share in the company when it was nothing. When 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 the guy put when there was a thousand dollars in worth in the company, the his COO was um, the only one putting any money in. He's the one who gave him all the money to start it up and run servers and all that. And then he fucking devalued his stock. Once they got investors, he devalued his stock down to like point zero three percent and gave all of his shares to somebody else. It was really a fucked up thing to do. He paid him. I don't know what he. They didn't say how much they paid him off. When they paid the guy, the other two guys, sixty-five million dollars. The uh, the two guys who claimed that he stole the idea from them. Right. They didn't say. They didn't say in the movie how much they paid the COO guy. So people get fucked in in the social network. They do. They, they fuck do. you in the social network. That's <laughs> good. That's going to be my new euphemism for like you know, for sex now. You know the social network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he fucked. The, I mean, he paid for a company that's worth thirty-three billion dollars, sixty-five million to one guy is maybe even if even if he had to give another sixty-five to the other guy, a drop in the bucket. And the guy from Napster uh, is a seven percent shareholder, so that means that the guy from Napster's got at least three billion dollars of the of that thirty-three billion, right? Because ten percent would be three billion dollars. I need to make money for the fucking internets, man. 
the, my site, fuckinginternets.net. You do. Why isn't that shit worth fucking sixty billion dollars? You need to monetize. I do. You know, I always think about monetizing, and I never get around to it. I'm just like, man, you know, ads. I, I signed up for AdSense. Like that's like another fucking Google product. Right? Yes. So I signed up for AdSense, and I and I attached it to um, my personal web page that gets no hits at all. Uh, <laughs> Bojoey.com. I get almost no hits at all. And they accepted me there, but but because it's a blogger site that's like, well, they got all these pre-made stuff, I couldn't figure out how to get the ad in. No, it's, I'm sorry, it's not a blogger. It's a um, uh, the one the one of the other ones, not Postress, but the other kind that's kind of like it's the, uh, it's the uh, it's the thing, man. It's, it's the good. thing. I'll think of it in a minute. A Tumblr. It's, it's a, a Tumblr. Tumblr. Thank you. I was gonna say it's the thing that the kids are doing nowadays. Right, and, and Tumblr. The, either I don't know how, or I couldn't get enough control of it to put in HTML anywhere. It, it'll put in widgets and stuff, but I couldn't put in any code. But my the shop's account, the printing shop's um, website, which is uh, jcprintshop.com or camilleryprinting.com, that's a um, blogger site. So that's affiliated with Google. So I just said put in AdSense ads. And I'll get paid every time someone views the shop site. I said, that's awesome. And so I said, and I won't even tell my dad. I'll just put my own accounts <laughs> and I'll keep the, the ad revenue from the website. So the ads go up and I'm happy. I tune to the page and they're like, they're like all printing ads. Right. Every single ad is for another printing shop. It's like, for the, for okay, the competition. Yeah. I, I can't have these ads. <laughs> I can't have these ads up. Oh yeah, they're gone now. Yeah, I took it all down. I took it. I, I just, like, I just browsed to the site here. I like your site. Oh, no, thanks. You know what it is? I, I read an article that blogging, rather than having a static site, is more attractive to people to keep coming to, for coming upcoming business. So, you know, I'll post on the shop's Facebook page that we're having a sale, or I'll put a couple pictures of a couple things that we did this week and say that you know posters are on sale and stuff like that. And it's almost like a real blog rather than. a website I, right i got like 100 hits last month nice so yeah, well yeah it's better than nothing anyway that's uh kim campbell's also having a hard time hearing you joe yeah it's strange my meters are doing well my meters are right up in there uh, i don't know what else i can do i can try pumping this up here again maybe that'll be better yeah speaking of speaking of the facebook we were talking about the facebook a little bit ago we were um, Kim Campbell was also part of the great defriending of, of 2010. <laughs> you were on a cruise when most of this happened. And I think I was the insti- I was what initiated it, I think. You initiated it. Mary Ellen really started it way back when. She was the first person to defriend Chris. We're talking about the, uh, the defriending of, um, of Chris, um, who, who's lost his mind. And, um, well, you know, it's, it's a sad story. But Mary Ellen defriended him a long time ago when he was talking about uh, getting rid of all the illegal immigrants. Okay. Um, because he, he wanted them all, he, he wants them all gone. And, you know, um, you know our, our, our four-year-old, is um, she's Hispanic, and, um, you know, she looks like Dora the Explorer, literally. Mm-hmm. You know, and we were less like, you know, that's like, you should you should really think about this. Uh, you know, it wasn't about this necessarily the uh, the getting rid of the immigrants. It was the whole Arizona law thing, where they can be stopped and deported, like you know, if they don't have their papers. Sure. sure. You know, and our point was like Dulcinea has four. She doesn't have papers. You want to deport her? He got really pissed. So Mary Ellen defriended him, and Chris and his girlfriend thought that was very funny, and they giggled about it. They were like, hee 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 hee. And then um, yeah, so he he did that thing about the global warming fraud. Right. And, um, you know, using whatever it was Glenn Beck told him to that particular day. Mm-hmm. And you had said something. I tried to ignore it. And then you had said something about, like, I think you all know. I said was, I think all I said was, how about posting, I'm having a good day, or had a delicious lunch, or post a picture of a grilled cheese sandwich once in a while. Right. I like Chris, and, and I don't mind hearing from him, and I'd like to hear that he's doing well and that his kids are good. I even put, or, or put down, my kids are doing awesome. And he really got offended at that, I think. But, and then I went on well, a cruise. Well, no, it was, the, it was the Mondo comment. Well, that's what got me. Or like, you know, you said, or I miss Mondo, I should visit. Yeah, yeah, I did say that too. And then his, his friends, they, they jumped all over that. You know, his, uh, his right-wing 
you know, nut buddy friends. They jumped all over that because they, they claimed that I was the, uh, what did they say? They said I was the, the, me the messier <laughs> and that you were one of my uh, decables. And it was like, don't mess with the messier, you know, and his decables or something along those lines. And I'm like, what the hell's a messier? And uh, you know, I don't know about my decables. I was concerned about that. <laughs> the whole story is actually on my blog, the, uh, the fucking internets.net. But yeah, so I, I defriended him because I was like, you know, this is like, I just can't look at this stuff anymore. And, you know, sure, like, you know, one of his arguments back kind of his, uh, was, that, you know, you can hide, like, certain people's feeds. Sure you can. Like games, like Farmville. I hide Farmville. I hide Mob Wars. I hide all, the, all that stuff that I don't want to see. Right. Um, you know, I could have hidden his feed, but he's very concerned about people being politically correct. He hates it. And I felt that it would have been politically correct to just hide the feed. So I defriended him. I really didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But he lost his fucking shit. And he defriended everybody, almost oh, everybody. Mean? He defriended my kid. He defriended Josh. And, like, Josh has never done – Josh is awesome. He's never done anything wrong to anybody. He defriended Josh. He defriended you. He might still be friends with Jen. He is still friends with Jen. Because they got to see what's going on. They want to know what's – they want to know if we're talking about them. I think that's what it is. I guess. I don't it's know. sad. I felt bad after, when I came back and I saw all that had gone on. And, you know, I wasn't part of anything past that first – exchange no you weren't um, yeah and i was like oh well he's not my friend anymore <laughs> it was odd but you know um coincidentally uh according to networkworld.com the number one reason why friends dump friends on facebook is that they get fed up seeing too many useless posts such as politics or religion and yes. inappropriate racist comments chris does not post inappropriate racist comments but the politics and religion is is one of the reasons why this happened yeah it's, it's a it's true <laughs> and it's it's all he posts if he posted something else i could or you know if he posted if he posted politics with something to back it up yeah because that, that was my him and his, point too. yeah him and his friends it's like you know they're just like global warming's a fraud <laughs> and it's like well why do you say that And they're like oh you suck man because you're just listening to what obama tells you and you're not thinking for yourself, man. And I'm like, well, I'm just wondering where you got your information. Ah, oh, we don't need to tell you where our information is. You know, <laughs> we don't need those stinking badges. Uh, whereas other friends of mine, like, you know, who do post, I mean, they're not even really, you know, good friends of mine. They're people I haven't seen in 20 years. And some of them post the same sort of stuff, but they, there's always a link or something. It's like, you know, sure. look at how Obama's fucking with us now. But there's a link to where they're getting their information from. So... While I don't have to agree with it, I see where they're getting their information. And Chris just lost his fucking mind. Yeah. But it's, it's sad. It is. Does John talk to him still? Um, yes, but no. Like, they haven't spoken since the event. But they they didn't often speak anyway before that. Right. No. Okay. So, you know, um, eventually, I mean, they're still friends on the Facebook. Um John's not one of the people who fell in the great defending of uh, 2010. And, um, you know, John says he'll talk to him. He's like, you know, if Chris brings this up, he says he doesn't really want to talk to him about it. But, you know. Eh. What are you going to do? I don't know. It, well, he could now, he, now with the new um, Facebook groups, he could start a group of people that are like-minded like him. And then he can post that group with his friends that are like, like him. And then he can post everything else to everyone else. But he would never do that because people with his mindset are always trying to convince everyone else to their mindset. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't know if I like the Facebook groups feature either. Anyway. Yeah, the Facebook. Uh, you know, I don't like anything about the Facebook, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like, I like the fact that I can... It's easy to keep track of friends without having to actually keep track of them. Sure. Yeah, I keep it for that reason. I have some friends that I'm not in direct contact with except through Facebook, like high school, high school people. People that I like a lot and I like being able to talk to on there once in a while. Or, and occasionally a, re a real life text message or phone call. But mostly it's on there. That's why I stick with it. Uh, do, you, do you remember Bones? Tall, skinny Bones? Sure I do. Getting married today. Really? Yes. Congratulations, Congra Bones. 
Yes, congratulations, Bones. Of course, I know this because I'm friends with him on the Facebook. Yeah. Haven't had a conversation with him in years, but you know, I know this because you know we're friends on the Facebook. Who even knew he was still alive? I did like because I'm friends with him on the Facebook. <laughs> he definitely seemed like the type that would not be alive. That's kind of fucked up. He seems like he's doing really well. I got to give him that. Good. I mean, that's based on, you know, Facebook feed, but. No, that's good, though. Fucking Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I went and saw the Facebook movie last night is because it was my birthday. Jen took me to the movies and out for a slice of pizza. Happy birthday. Thank you. Notice I didn't yep. go out for steak. I went out for a slice of pizza. Pizza's good. I like pizza, but I prefer steak. I was about to say, you do like steak, too. I do. So did you have pound cake? Um, I had pound cake the day before at my father's house. They had cake for me. Uh, but I didn't have pound cake yesterday. I, I had popcorn and, and pizza, and I didn't want to eat pound cake also. Right. I have pound cake here, though. I can eat pound cake now. I have pound cake, too, because... It's a tradition on Joe's birthday. We eat pound cake because Joe, that's all Joe eats is, it's not all he eats, but when it comes to cake, Joe will only eat the pound cake. It's true. I'm going to, Joe, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm eating some pound cake. I'm going to have some too. Although I haven't eaten dinner yet, I'm going to eat pound cake anyway. Today is also uh, Mary Ellen's boyfriend's uh, birthday. Oh, that's nice. Happy birthday. Um, she's mentioned it a couple of times. I've got to call him afterwards. Um, but yes, happy birthday, John. And I, I will call you afterwards. But um, right now I'm eating my pound cake because for Joe's birthday. And you know how hard it is to find pound cake in North Carolina? I don't know why it would be hard. Not too hard, really. But, you know, I just wanted to find, like, a piece of pound cake. Like, you know, used to be able to get the Intamin's, like, single slice. Sure. I had to get this whole sliced pound cake. I've got... I got the shitload of pound cake. <laughs> I'm going to leave it for John and the kids. Jesse will be very pissed because, you know, it's, it's not good for them. So No, I think it's definitely not. It's tasty. <laughs> it is tasty. But it's not good for you. I just had a piece. I'm happy. I feel like it's your birthday. I'm eating pound cake. Yeah, I have Entenmann's. It... I also have a whole cake. Though. Excellent. Oh, see, there you go. Yep. See, now that's some good pound cake. This is all right pound cake. I love the Entenmann's, my favorite kind of pound cake. When I got married, you were there. I guess I'm telling everyone else. I was. Instead of <laughs> wedding cake, since I don't eat pound cake, Jen fed me a slice of pound cake, which we had on the side next to the actual wedding cake. So her, my fork full of cake was Entenmann's pound cake. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot you don't eat. No, there, there definitely is a lot I don't eat. Surprise, how fat I am, someone who doesn't eat. Well, I guess it depends on what you eat. Mm. But I, I would think, depending on, even considering what you eat, you know, not that I'm saying you're fat. I'm a big guy. It's the, you are a big guy. It's the quantity as well as the quality. For example, my dinner tonight is this bag of McDonald's double cheeseburgers. And not you one see, there double we cheeseburger. Go. There's two double cheeseburgers in that bag. Because one <laughs> is just not enough. I had to have two. And they're a dollar. How could you not get two when they're a dollar? It ruins me every time. Every time I try and diet, they put the double cheeseburgers on sale, and I'm <laughs> sunk. Fucking McDonald's. It's awful. And then when I get tired, like, I, on my way home from work, I have, like, a 45-minute drive. I'll start getting tired, and the only way to wake myself up while I'm driving, since I don't smoke, and that was my old way to keep myself awake while I'm driving, is to eat something. So I drive through, I get a big soda, I get a double cheeseburger, and it wakes me up, and it's, it's, a, it's a downhill slope from there. It's how I, I never lose weight. It's terrible. You need to drink coffee. I guess. I mean, I drink caffeinated soda all day. That's got to have almost as much caffeine as coffee. Yeah, that's my big thing. I mean, I still smoke, though. So, I mean, when I'm doing the drive, you know, Smoking I've got cigarettes, helped. but I've also got coffee. Smoking always helped me when I was driving. I used to, like, chain smoke while I was driving. I, um, I still chain smoke if I drive far. Yeah. Well, actually, not, you know, I suppose it's not really chain smoke, but it's like when you drive far, it's kind of, I smoke like, uh, I'll smoke about a cigarette an hour okay. when I'm doing the, uh, when I'm doing the long, 
Like I'm doing the long haul drive to Florida or New York. Right, like next week. Like next weekend. Next weekend I'll need extra cigarettes because I'm going to smoke uh, at least a cigarette. And when I start, when I first get on the road, that's going to probably be three or four cigarettes. Like in that first hour and then it'll be a cigarette an hour. And uh, I stop only when I run out of coffee. That's when I stop. I usually okay. get two large coffees. I stop at the pilot station. I get two large coffees. When they're done, I, you know, I, I have to stop again get more coffee. It's not even about gasoline. It's about coffee. It's always and, uh, has been, since we lived together, since forever, since you were yep. old enough to drink coffee, you've been that way with coffee. We used to go to diners. Coffee. We used to go to diners for two bucks, and used to just drink nothing but coffee, and I drink soda, refill yep. after refill. They must have hated us. Oh yeah, I'm sure they did. That was back when you can when we used to go to the smoking section diner. Yep. And then they added in the non-smoking section, and that section grew. Yeah. And now there's just no smoking. There's fucking no smoking anywhere. Nope. Which, you know, you know what? I don't mind so much at restaurants and diners. I don't no. mind so much. No, of course. Bars, on the other fucking hand, I think that's just, that's just barbaric. Sucks being you. It does. It does suck being me. Go outside in the freezing cold. <laughs> I get to stay in here with my nice fresh air and my beers. But, you know, I stopped smoking in my house, too, though. Like, even before, uh... Before the um, before I stopped smoking anywhere else. Yeah, you have to. You know, a lot of everybody I know that still smokes has that same rule. They smoke outside because it stinks up your house, stinks up your furniture, makes your walls yellow. I mean, any adult that has smoked their whole life and finally has a place where they're living, they don't. Nobody smokes at home anymore. You know what it was? It was when uh, Mary Ellen was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, we're not smoking in the house anymore. Everybody's got to smoke outside. Because I didn't even really notice the smoke in the house. I, I didn't notice it because, you know, I smoked. I smoked yeah. all the time there. And then you go into other smokers' houses, and you're like, holy fuck. <laughs> and then someone else is like, dude, your house smelled just like that when you smoked in the house. I'm like, really? So, yeah, just I don't smoke in the house anymore. I don't plan on ever smoking in my house again Good. because that really is fucking nasty. Yeah, yeah. It's awful. I haven't smoked in... Since I lived at 631 down at Crawford, so that was like, I moved, Jen and I moved out in 92 to across the street in Aunt Betty's basement, and we smoked there, and then okay. we were there, I think we were there for eight months, and then we moved to Philomena's basement, and uh, I didn't smoke once I moved there, that was my last cigarette, so that must have been 93. That was, uh, it had to have been after 94, you were still living... In your, uh, across the street in 94, because that's when Woodstock was. Right, right, okay. Because I remember I bought, we bought all those pay-per-views of Woodstock. Right. And you, I, me and Red made you guys jealous for like five minutes. Because <laughs> we tried to go. Yeah, we were like, we're going to fucking go to Woodstock, man. Who wants to go to Woodstock? And everyone was like, no, you guys go. You guys rock. And we're like, yeah, we fucking rock, man. We're just driving up there. We're going to Woodstock. We're going we're gonna to fucking rock. We were like, ah, oh, everybody fucking thinks we're awesome because we're going to Woodstock. And we got on the Palisades and Red is like, oh, my, my mom's birthday is tomorrow. We can't go to Woodstock. <laughs> I was like, really? All right, well, you know, Joe's got it on the paper. He'll just go back, you know. Tail between our legs. Hey, guys, you know, we were going to go to Woodstock, but, you know, can we come in? And watch that sucks. TV? <laughs> it did. I mean, I hear where she's coming from, but it was like it, we were about to go on a great adventure. You know, and uh, and she, she she went and screwed it up. She still feels bad about that sometimes. She's like, you're still mad about that? I'm like, I wasn't really mad about it in the first place. But, you know, I was. That sucked, man. It was almost 20 years ago, you should tell her. I should tell her that. Make her feel and then real. tell her how bitter I still am. Make her feel real old. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. That's sick, as, sick. sick as a dog. Yeah. I'm feeling much better, though. I, I almost, I told you this before, I... At one point today, I felt so ill. I was about to call you up and say, "Joe, we can't do the show tonight." I'm, I, I had, I don't know. My whole body just felt like absolutely terrible. I was sweating. I was, I was practically like trembling, and I was like, "I'm gonna die." I'm like, "This sucks." I'm gonna die in my brother's house. No one will find me till they come home. Hmm. And, uh, and you know, and then I got over it, <laughs> which was good because I really felt terrible. But I've been sick all week too. Since last 
since the last show. I've had stomach problems, and I don't want to be vulgar, but I've definitely had diarrhea for about seven straight days now. <laughs> There's nothing know, vulgar I, about diarrhea, man. It's and it's not the it's not the kind where I get serious cramping in my stomach where I have to run out and get medicine to, because otherwise you know it's just been disgusting for seven straight days and I don't know why I don't know if I had maybe I had a minor virus like a minor stomach virus I don't know it's been kind of gross not fun huh. I can imagine yeah I mean I've I've been there not recently but I've been there <laughs> I think this might have been too much information in this part of the conversation well. You know, that, that's, that's subjective. It is. <laughs> it is. And it's my birthday. I can talk about whatever I want. Exactly. You can talk about anything you want. It. It's my birthday weekend is how Jen and I refer to it. So I get like the whole, I got to, I slept till nine o'clock today. The kid was up at six. I, I slept till nine. Sweet. I got up at six because the dog was barking from his kennel, from his uh, crate. Poor doggy. And then, yeah, and then I went back to sleep until for probably about nine, nine thirty. That's something anyway. But, so is diarrhea one of the uh, – is that one of the Google um, Live un, unfriendly words, the, <laughs> the words that won't come up in the Google Live? I, I, I don't know. There's like yeah, – there's, 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 there's the new Google Instant thing where it, it um, doesn't just show you – it doesn't just try and guess what you're typing. It tries to actually give you sites before you finish typing. Because it's evil. Right, because they're evil and they're trying to read our minds and they're just um, assholes. So some of the odder ones are, if you type Pamela Anderson, it doesn't show any search results. It Pamela shows, Anderson. It just shows a blank screen. You can push enter and it'll show the search results. But it'll show a blank screen for the automatic search. Now, things like porn and titties and motherfucker and naked and milf and nipples, those kind of make sense to me. And those are some of my favorite words. Yes, but I can understand why they wouldn't try and guess where you're trying to search. Pamela Anderson, I suppose, is the only one in that list that sort of I can understand. Because maybe people are looking for the video, her sex video or something. Um, but but I don't know. The, the, the really confusing ones are, this is from Gawker, um, women rapping, style doggy. Servitude, nymphomania, leather straitjacket, new pornographers, and the, any word is evil. Could be Mondo is evil, could be Bob is evil, could be shit. Google is evil. evil. Could be Google is evil. Any of those, They're trying to cut that shit off at the head. <laughs> any of those blank is evil don't show up. Remember Bird is evil? No. Oh my god, Bird is evil. It was the best website ever, way back yeah. when. Really Back bad. in the early to mid nineties, don't remember, never saw it. Oh my god, it was uh, it was proof that Bert from from Sesame Street was evil. I mean, he was uh, he was uh, what do you call it? He was he was in collusion with Hitler. <laughs> he was just uh, he was an evil motherfucker, man. Everybody everybody knew it. They're talking and, about uh, Bert from Sesame Street. Bert from Sesame Street, yeah. Nice. Bert is evil. Maybe he is. Diarrhea does come up though in the Google search. I just tried Google search. Okay. And um, well, what if I tried that, Joe's diarrhea? <laughs> things that won't show up are also dirty pillows, get my sister, hairy, licked, nude, seduced, submissive, and tushy. Those tushy? Are the, those are the odd words that they found. I mean, things like the new pornographers, that's like a band name, shouldn't That is a band name. It's like New they, Wave or something. Shouldn't they come up when you try and search them? I mean, you can push enter and get the I don't know about the whole Google Instant thing in general. Fucking Google. Fucking Google. If we didn't name these episodes after songs, we'd have to name this one fucking Google. I, I do love, uh, I do love the, the Google, but, you know, again, I, I, do, I do think they're probably, they're, they're more evil than they want us to think they are. Definitely. Is. And then with that whole net neutrality thing, that kind of sucked. And okay, maybe you don't so. Know. Maybe you don't know that part. Their whole old, that's old news, not on our list this week. Wait, what's not on the list? They Google made some kind of deal with Verizon. Um, okay, they didn't really make a deal. Google met with Verizon to okay. discuss net neutrality, and oh, uh, they yeah, proposed their propo They made a proposal to Congress that basically says 
will make um, any internet you have in your house or le or any solid hardwired internet free of rules and you know completely net neutral. But anything that you're getting on your cell phones, the providers can can give preferential treatment to sites that they feel they want to give preferential treatment to. For example, Google on their Android phones can give preferential treatment to YouTube, which is their own company. So they would get more bandwidth and they would get you know, faster connections than someone like me with my iPhone that was trying to get at the same videos. They could also then charge extra for um, premium content. And so Google was part of that whole thing. Another and that's bullshit. Why, yeah, another reason why Google is evil. Google, you know, all right, I'm going to take Google. Google's fucking evil. <laughs> I mean, I like their shit. I mean, you like some of their shit, too. I do. I use it. You know, I, I like their phone. I, lo I love my Android phone. But I'm going to say that, you know, it's fucking evil. It is. Speaking it is, phones, it is you know, just evil. They're going to start letting people, um, they're going to put cell phone service in the subways here. Anyway. I think that's a horrible idea. That's like putting cell service on phone, on airplanes. You really want the people next to you blathering on and on to people that aren't even there? You know, I don't, however, when, when I saw that, I did see that, when I saw that, I was shocked because I really, I mean, not having lived in New York City for so long, to me that was just a no-brainer. As annoying as it might be, I just really thought they would have had that taken care of years ago. Yeah, because, still, still don't you know, know, you know, an emergency, you might want to use your cell phone. True. You still got to use the... Emergency call boxes in the uh, in the stations, or grab a conductor. They still call conductors. <laughs> grab a conductor. I like that though. Grab a conductor. Ah, that should yeah. like. <laughs> that has two meanings. I got it. <laughs> grab a conductor. By the way, um, to just to step back a minute, um, I found the Bert is Evil site. It's now uh, located at Bert is Evil dot TV, and the the image I'm looking at right here is Bert. Um, Waving an American flag next to a member of the Klan. Nice. Yeah, and Bert, Bert is evil. So if you guys want to check that out, BertIsEvil.tv. I'll put it in the show notes. Okay, excellent. Yeah, because, I mean, this was like, this was my entire mid-90s was Bert is Evil. Really? Yes. I think my mid-90s was all news groups. Oh, yeah, <laughs> news groups. Remember news groups? I do. That's you know. That's where we first started on the fucking internet. That's where I was first in Angry Bob, on your computer, on the news groups. I was doing a fan fiction. Mm -hmm. I was doing. A, I did a sequel to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I think I remember. And I think it was probably better than the one that um, what's his nuts wrote, Paul something or the the guy that writes the uh, Artemis Fowl books. Okay. He did that. Uh, the sequel. Have you read it? No. Uh, it wasn't bad. Mine was better. But yeah, news groups. That's where we first started. Uh, you were like, Mondo, look what I can do with the computer. I mean, when I got my first computer, that's all there was. I mean, there was there was a browser. I had email, and it was um, the domain was inch.com. That was my first internet provider. I think I paid them a lot of money a month for just, there was nothing else. There was, the web, there was a web browser that, that did nothing. At the, not that I knew of anyway, but there were all these news groups where you could watch pictures of naked women slowly load down the screen as you <laughs> waited, you know, and you had to have these decoders because it was all these weird encoding because it was all text. And so somehow they converted pictures to text and you had to, it was, it was you know, great. It's great stuff. Way back in the day. Yep. But well, we, we got off the subject of the uh, cell phones in the subways. Yeah. It was just so look, a throwaway comment. You know, but, but look, look what we've gone though. We've gone from we've gone from fourteen four, you know, cable modem, not cable modem. I'm sorry, uh, like dial up modem. Yeah. Fourteen four, downloading. It's taken five minutes to download a picture of like you know, boobies. <laughs> and now you're going to be able to look at boobies all you want in the subway at the speed of light on your phone. It's true. Wonder if they'll have high speed in there. If it's going to be three G or LTE or one of those new systems. 4G is what I'm. I don't have 4G yet. My next phone's going to be 4G though, because mm -hmm. we're we're a 4G area here in Winston Salem. Oh. oh, and you have you have the um, and you have T-Mobile, so you get the uh, you can get the the big one. The um, well, no, I've I've got the Sprint. Oh, you got Sprint. I'm sorry. 
Right. But, the, but, but maybe I was I was mixing them up. Sprint is the one that has the um, the big the four the four point three inch screen one, the uh, HTC something or other. Um, yeah, Sprint's Evo? got the uh, HTC Evo. Evo. Yeah, yep, the cool. Evo, and the Samsung Epic. Okay. Epic is one of those those phones that they put out, and every every um, phone company has them, it's just different name. Anne Marie's listening to the show, and um, she might like uh, having self service in the subway because I know she li- she likes using her um, cell phone, you know, Twitter and stuff. Same reasons I do, yeah. but she also wants me to quit smoking. <laughs> so she's listening. She couldn't log into the chat, but she wants me to quit smoking. But she's someone I could see would definitely like to be able to use her phone in the subway. She takes the subway. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being able to um, use data in the subway to Twitter or Facebook or read something or, or download articles, go on the web. That, that stuff, I don't think I – it's not my problem. It's the conversations. Maybe they should right. just limit the service to data only. That, so maybe I'd like that. But Wi-Fi down there. There you instead. go. So, so then you're not even using minutes. Just that would be that would be ideal because yeah, you don't want to listen to all these conversations. Bad enough you have to hear them talking when they're with people. Right. <laughs> Human interactions is not for me. This is the most Human... this is the most talking I do for an entire week. <laughs> it might be the most talking I do for an entire week too, like all at once at least. But yeah, if you're gonna listen to if you're gonna listen to other people's conversations, it should be absolutely voluntary. You should not be have to force to listen to conversations because you happen to be eating at the same place, or um, you know, or stuck on the subway. And it's even worse if you're only hearing one side of it because half of you wants to say "shut the fuck up," and the other half of you is kind of curious as to what's really going on. It's true, and it's confusing. It's baffling. Your head hurts. It's, it's got to be even worse on planes. I mean, the, I've heard talk of them letting you talk on cell phones on planes. That that's got to be awful. The, the engines are loud, and people are trying to sleep. And maybe maybe they'll make it so you can only use them when the lights are on, like when they're feeding you. That would that right. be somewhat smart, I suppose. But that's awful. <laughs> do you do you watch The Family Guy? I've seen a bunch of episodes. I've I've never been a steady viewer, so. I've never watched like a whole season. There was the uh, there was the episode where um, I think it was when Stewie meets himself from the future, but he's in the elevator, and there's a guy on a cell phone, and he's having this conversation. It's just really irritating. I think Stewie wound up killing him. Nice. But then the, the guy just kept saying after a bit, he was just like, "So, are you gonna pick me up? Are are you gonna pick me up? <laughs> so, are you gonna pick me up? Yeah." And Stewie killed him. Stewie's the best. I love Stewie. You gonna pick my me kid, up? My kid's nothing like Stu. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I suppose so. Because as as awesome as Stewie is, man, he's like What's the he dog's is name? evil. What's the dog's name? Brian. See, I wish my dog were more like Brian. I think Brian's a cool dog. Brian is cool. Mm-hmm. I wish I was more like Brian. <laughs> Never mind the dog. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, Brian's awesome. That's an awesome show. I, I know. I've I've tried watching. It's again. It's one of those things that isn't on my priority list. So I watch occasionally. I've seen occasional episodes. And same thing. Same thing with Simpsons. I never watched the Simpsons either. I don't, I'm not a cartoon person. I think is all it is. I am, but not so much with the Simpsons anymore. It's not even that I don't like them anymore. It's just you know. I just don't have the energy to hunt them down and watch them. It's like Adult Swim. I hear so many good things about Adult Swim and uh, Seth Green and all that stuff. And I've never seen any <laughs> of them. I don't think, I, think, I think none. I think the only one I saw was the, the Empire Strikes Back spoof. I didn't even see the, all of them. I only saw one of the... One of those. What were they called? What were those, uh? Yeah, Robot Chicken. Right, right. I love Robot Chicken. Have you seen the Star Wars Family Guy episodes? Uh, that was what I was talking about. I saw one of the one of them. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, so you saw the Empire Strikes Back uh, Family Guy? Yeah, yeah. That was fucking brilliant. Yeah, it was very good. That, oh, man. Oh, it was brilliant. Empire Strikes Back, best Star Wars movie ever. I agree. Despite its flaws. I have, flaw- I have problems with that movie. I ever tell you? Um, no. Empire Strikes Back? 
you know, all right, here, here's, my, here's my biggest problem with The Empire Strikes Back, man, is like, the movie is fucking awesome. It's the best out of all the Star Wars movies as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Luke Skywalker goes to Dagobah to get his Jedi Knight training. And meanwhile, Han, Leia, and the, the gang are on the run from the Empire. They're on the run from like three or four Star Destroyers and trying to decide what to do if they're going to go to go see Lando. Right. Now, all this happens at the same time. So either Luke was in Jedi training for about six fucking hours <laughs> or they spent weeks wearing the same clothes on the Millennium Falcon trying to evade these three Star Destroyers before settling on going to like, you know, see Lando and Bespin. <laughs> That's great. I never even thought of that. That's all I think about when I watch it, man. I'm just like, well, what's happening here? <laughs> because, you know, you know there are changes of clothes on the... Uh, on board the Millennium Falcon, because at the end of the movie, when Lando is wearing Han's suit, yeah. he's got Han's vest on. Han's got that jacket on the whole time. So there are clothes aboard to be had. Leia's still wearing that winter suit. <laughs> so either that takes place over, like, you know, weeks or months while Luke's training, or Luke got about six hours worth of Jedi Knight training before going off to fight Vader. That is really a huge gap and a huge hole in that, in that movie. Absolutely. That's awful. Still the best fucking one, though. Yeah. AJ was telling me earlier that he, he got a, a limited edition Empire Strikes Back case for his iPhone. Really? Yeah. He, I didn't see it. He ordered it. I'm sure I will see it, because everything he orders, he ships to the printing shop. There you go. Yeah. He fell God. asleep today at the Starbucks. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> Just ran him out a little. Well, you know... All right, no, I'm not going to go there. No, yeah, we shouldn't talk about the service on that. No. Too personal. We're getting too much. Yeah, personal. we are. <laughs> if, if these weren't people that we care about, it'd probably be easier. <laughs> probably. probably. Speaking of people I don't care about, I went apple picking with Jen and her friends. You like apple, though. Not apples, but you like apple. <laughs> yes. So at first, when I read your tweet that you're going apple picking, I, I thought that you were going like you know, to, to the Mac store. That would have been awesome. To the Apple store. <laughs> That would have been so awesome. No, I, but, I actually, I'm just kidding about Jim's friends. I kind of like. But so, how was how was the apple picking? There were apples. We picked them. There are apples on the floor. There's rotten apples. There's lots of bugs. Yeah. It's kind of gross. But Jojo ate some apples right off the tree. Nice. Which is also kind of gross. How about a little? <laughs> how about a little pesticides to go along with your apple today? Yeah. And then we didn't buy any apples. So what'd you do? You picked them. Picked them, ate them, hung around the apple fields, took a few pictures. So you're like unpaid migrant workers. Did you have to pay for this? You pay a dollar for the privilege to go into the field. Holy shit! And then you can eat all the apples you want. That's a fucking racket, though, because they have you picking the apples, right? Do you like have to put them in like a basket, like a bushel? If you buy them, you put them in a thing and you carry them out. With you. All right, so you, you don't have to like pick the apples and just like leave them there. No. Because I was thinking that could be quite a racket. I mean, you know, some people are paying migrant workers like two fifty an hour mm -hmm. to pick apples. <laughs> they charged you a dollar to do it. Yep. And then, well, if we had bought, they they, they charge a dollar seventy, dollar I think it was a dollar forty a pound for the apples to buy. Wow. That's not bad. That's like supermarket prices. It's pretty close. We did buy pumpkins because there's a completely fake pumpkin patch. Which is actually just a grassy field where they throw a whole million pumpkins. <laughs> the Baptist Church up the road has a uh, yeah, they have a pumpkin patch. Same thing. Just put a bunch of pumpkins out on their lawn. The kids had fun. They ran around. They thumped on pumpkins. Little Joe sat on pumpkins, stood on pumpkins, fell off of pumpkins. Ah. Yeah, it was cute. We got some pictures. We bought, he picked a couple little pumpkins for himself. We put them on the porch. Yeah, it's pump, pumpkin picking and apple picking. I mean, that's, that's just fun stuff, even if you don't like the apples. It is, and since I don't eat apples, it, I, I still enjoy it myself. And I enjoy the company thing, hanging out yeah. with uh, Matt and Adam. Uh, I don't see them so often anymore. All our lives are too busy. And right. our, new, our rule about going out to dinner with people with more than one kid is full in effect with their kids as well. So, um, yeah, so we don't see them so often. So it's nice to hang out and talk to them a bit in the field. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Sorry. Outstanding in their field. <laughs> yeah, we stood in the field in New Jersey. And then we were supposed to go to Five Guys, which is a, cheese, a cheeseburger place, uh, on the way home. And I missed the turn twice. I missed the turn once, 
on the stupid fucking New Jersey jug handles Garden State Parkway. Fuck it, it wasn't Garden State, it was Route 9. Stupid Route 9 jug handles. Missed the turn once, and we were like, all right, we'll have to turn on the next one. And then I missed it again, the second fucking jug handle. And so finally we were just like, all right, we'll just go. Fucking jug handle. Completely gave up on the Five Guys. Five Guys is the best fast food burgers around. It is. I can't eat there too often. No, definitely not. It's like... and greasy, and they give you a... You order a small fries, and they dump an entire bucket of fries into the bag. And it's a paper sack, so it's like... Within three seconds, man, that thing is just like dripping with grease. Yep. And it is so good. Yep, and I missed that. It was supposed to be like, you know, my birthday junk food. We're going to go tomorrow instead. Tomorrow we're taking baby Joe to the Prospect Park Zoo. And nice. We'll go, there's, a, there's a Five Guys over at, in Park Slope. We'll have lunch there. We have a Five Guys here in Winston-Salem. I have not been yet. Mm. But I have been to the one that we had in Kingston. That's very good stuff. But yeah. Yeah, they're popping up everywhere. Yep. I, we, we went to Cheeseburger, Cheeseburger. No Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger, Cheeseburger. That was... I think they're trying to be kind of like five. They have waiter service, so they're a little more like a restaurant than a Five Guys. But they're a little, they're better than fast food, but not as good as like Fridays or Applebee's. It's kind of like in the middle. It's like that place in the mall where they sing every once in a while. What are those fake diners called? Right. Um, doesn't matter. They're those. Like, yeah, it doesn't like, matter. I know what you're talking <laughs> about, though. <laughs> and so, but they have a one pound burger that if you eat the one pound burger, they put a picture of you on the wall. I eat the one pound burger. Nice. This goes right back around to why I'm fat. <laughs> Eating one pound burgers to do it. Now, when you order a cheeseburger, do they start going cheeseburger, cheeseburger? No. Like the Saturday Night Live skit now? No, I wish they did. They have five size burgers. You can get like the full pounder, the three quarter pounder, then they have a half pounder, then they have like classic, and then they have like a little one. Jen gets like the little one. No fries, cheeps. <laughs> yeah. No call, Pepsi. How, how, how small is a little cheeseburger? It's small. I'd say it's like a, a, a regular, like a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Skinny little patty. Okay, so it's not like White Castle small. No, I, I would say a kid could eat it or someone is like Jen, like 100, Jen's 100 pounds. So she eats one burger like that and she gets a bulge. I was going to say, she's 100 pounds soaking wet maybe. <laughs> which, which isn't to say that she's not, you know, I'm not saying she's too skinny. No, she's good. But she's, uh, she's, she's small. She's a, she's petite. She is. She's happy she's, the way she's she is. She, she goes to like, like she goes to these Pilates classes at the gym. Some other kind of crazy class where they said that they make her do three hundred jumping jacks and a full half hour worth of sit ups. I was like, how do you do a full half hour of sit ups? That's insane. <laughs> they don't even count them. She doesn't know how many. She just knows they do it for a whole half hour. I can do sit ups for a half hour. Really slowly. Well, that's like two. Yeah, it's like two <laughs> sit ups for me. It takes you about half an hour to do two, and I just give up. <laughs> you know, I try to do a set of five. Half an hour later, I'm like, fuck, I got to get to work. That was two. One and a half, maybe. Do you got to go back down? If you got to go back down, then it's one and a half. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my idea of exercise is uh, drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes, you know, arms. <laughs> Talk about the arms, man. It's aerobic exercise. I'm trying. This is my last weekend, I think, of uh, of excess. I think I'm going to start. I'm going to at least start biking. You know, I do like exercise biking. I'm going to at least start exercising along with my too much food. Maybe I'll cut down the food a little, too. I, I, I Usually I do one or the other, and I lose weight. So I'm going to try. Yeah, I've lost a little bit of weight since I've been here. Um... You know, partly because, uh, you know, I'm not eating out as much. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to, up in Kingston, I used to eat out a lot. Like, so even when I was watching my, when I was watching what I was eating, you know, just no time, man. Sure. There's just no time. So it was like, grab something, you know, grab something on the way. Ooh, pardon me. Grab something on the way. Um, ate lunch at work a lot. I don't do that here. Like, I bring my lunch and I, uh, I eat it in the car. Yeah, I've noticed I've seen your posts. <laughs> it's so much nicer to sit in my car for half an hour. Is it? Yeah. Is, it is there a cafeteria or something that you avoid? Yeah, not because it sucks or anything, but because I'm just, you know, it's just more peaceful in my car. Sure. You could sit, you could look up, you can play with your phone a bit, check some tweets. I listen to the radio. 
like I listen to the BBC News or whatever it is that they have on on the NPR station. Mm. That's funny. That's, yeah, that's the only station I listen to. The rest of it's Jesus Rock. Do you know if those big giant new Apple server farms are anywhere near where you live in North Carolina? Do you anything, know anything about that? Um, I do, and I don't know. I, I would plan on trying to find out because um, I figure maybe I can get a job there. Sure. I don't. I don't think they're too close though. But they're yeah, they're down here. Uh, they paid some obscene amount of money for this uh, like farmland. Um, I, I don't know. They they made this uh, like couple of folk very rich. They did. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's very. Oh cool. yeah. I think these people like thirty years ago they paid like uh like thirty grand for all this land and Apple gave them like seventeen million, one point seven million. Yeah, I think it's one point seven. That's a lot of money. That's very awesome. I think they went and bought 40 acres um, with, with very a very small amount of that money. They bought themselves another 40 acres of land somewhere. They're going to be doing a, putting up a data center. Yeah, so. I, think, I think Apple's going to start doing streaming services, kind of like uh, Spotify. Spotify does it in, the, in, in England, where you pay like $10 a month and you get unlimited music. Streamed. Right stream you know from wherever it's, it's like you don't own your own music anymore i don't know how much i like that idea i i'm maybe i don't know i like uh i like last fm mm -hmm. and um and slacker i use those i, I use them both well, those are more like uh, you don't actually get to say play these eight songs from you don't get to choose your song you give them a kind of a genre with Slacker, you could choose songs for like a monthly a monthly fee. Okay. Um, so you get to choose songs, right, but so that's, uh, that's more like what I think Apple's going to do is going to be you'll, you'll, you could you could um, you know play your choice of songs because you're paying. Them. Whereas Pandora would kind of play whatever they want and stick an ad in every once in a while. Fucking Pandora. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pandora personally. You know, I I don't. No. Not that not that I don't like them. But, uh, you know, I mean, when it comes to Last FM, Slacker, and uh, Pandora, Pandora plays more stuff I don't want to hear. Okay. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, their algorithm's different than, uh, I mean, Slacker, I think somebody, I think they hire, like, some Chinese people to make the connections, you know, cheap labor to make connections. And the connections are usually pretty good. Um Last FM is usually tag based. Okay. Um, so it's like, you know, garage garage punk. So if you garage punk tag radio, you're just gonna get things that have been tagged garage punk. Whereas Pandora is um you know, their whole thing is is nifty. You know, it's like, well you chose this band and this band has like, you know, distorted guitar, a heavy a heavy bass line, and um, you know, a singer who sounds like Justin Bieber. And so they'll play other stuff that's like that, and that's not necessarily what I want to hear, though. It's like if I play, if I picked, you know, if I picked Flipper. Have you ever listened to Flipper? No. Flipper, Flipper's, Flipper's awesome, but they kind of suck. <laughs> you know, depending on your point of view. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's very raw post-punk kind of, you know, noise. It's noise, and I like it. I like Flipper. So they'll play some other sort of noise rock that I'm just like, this is just terrible. What the fuck is this now? Because they're like, well, don't you like this? You know, you liked, you liked bad guitar playing, you know, obnoxious lyrics and, you know, shitty drum playing. And it's like, well, yeah, I like it when Flipper does it. But I see what you're saying. You know, I suppose it also depends on, like, you know, if you're listening to... If, if your genre of music is more mainstream, I'm not trying to say that like yours is more mainstream. Mm -hmm. no, but, um, is. right, I mean, you know, so if you put in like Alice in Chains or something, you're probably going to get a lot of similar kind of music. Sure. Whereas if I'm going to put in like Flipper, I'm going to get some of the things are going to be similar and some of the things are just going to be terrible because I think I'm confusing it. Well, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. It definitely would depend on type of music. But I do like Slacker. I don't use any of them much. I, I would like to more. I, 
I tend to I have XM in my car or Sirius, whatever they're called. And so I right. tend to listen I listen to like the nineties station. It's like when we live together. It's like the music coming out of my room from when we live together, except in my car twenty four hours a day. It's nothing but Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and Nirvana and all of that. And and I do try once in a while to listen to like the pop rock station that we have because I hate feeling like I'm out of touch with me. I don't want to be like my parents and never listen to anything but Simon and Garfunkel and Peter Pearl and Mary. You know, they, they right. have no idea of any kind of modern music or anything like that. So I do try once in a while to stay, live in the now and listen to some <laughs> fucking modern stuff. But I don't know, a lot of it's garbage, so I have a hard time. Yeah, I hear you. It d does it make you feel old? It makes me feel old when I say that that stuff's garbage. It does. It, it hurts me sometimes. But uh, are you mostly listening to like rock though, like you know, like yeah. pop rock? Yeah, like a lot of people, like you know, my friends would make fun of me for saying that I kind of like Linkin Park. Linkin Park is um, they're, they're not new, obviously, but they're kind of a modern rock and roll band. They got the rap guy doing the rap parts, and you know, they're kind of newish rock. Yeah, they're all right. I like them. I, I do too, and Godsmack and. Um, these bands, these, you know, and, and the truth is, these aren't new bands. I, I, I have to go back on what I even said. I'm, I'm behind the times. I don't know if there is any new, <laughs> if there is any new rock, really. That Justin I know Bieber. Of. Bieber, yeah. Bieber. Justin well, you know Bieber. the Obits, uh, the song that um, we played at the beginning of the song. That mm -hmm. that's a uh, 2009. Okay. Like that album was uh, released 2009. Yeah, I like it. So that's uh, that's new rock, Joe. Okay. How about, uh, have, have you listened to any of, like, the top 40 stuff that I'm forced to listen to? The, the R&B, as it were. Well, I hear, you know, you, you can't avoid Lady Gaga now and then. Right. And you can't avoid Katy Perry. I hear some of that once in a while. Um, that's about it. I st you know, when I hear the stuff that gets more towards rap, I, I tend to change the station as much as I try to be open-minded. I just don't like it enough to to say, yes, we listened to <laughs> House of Pain in the 90s, and we listened to Insane in the Membrane. We're cool rockers that like rap. We listen to Public Enemy. But the, I don't see that today anymore. I, I, you know, Maybe it was true in the 90s when we were listening to grunge or rock or whatever, and we could tolerate Cypress Hill. Right. I can't, I just can't tolerate Eminem is the closest I can get. I kind of like Eminem. He's like my Cypress Hill of, of the two, of the 2010s here. He's got some good stuff. He does. He's talented. I kind of like it. But I can't listen to Jay-Z. All the auto-tune. You know that auto-tune shit? I oh, can't. yeah. Everything now. Everything is auto-tuned. Everything. Except for Eminem. Everything else is auto-tuned. I agree. It's just... It's awful. Hurts me. I listened to that stuff for two days driving down to North Carolina. I'm sorry. That, I had uh, Ange with me in the car. You I know, she's you. 14. Yeah, this is what I, she listens to when she's not listening to better music, I which isn't you. very often. <laughs> and um, we heard the same five songs over and over and over again. I was driving a rental truck. It only had AM, FM radio. I'm busy driving trying to tow my car, something I've never done before. So I was like, kid, you're in charge of the radio. Sure. Same five songs. The only one I really liked was the uh, one about Han Solo. There's a song about Han Solo. Not really. It's called Riden Solo. <laughs> and the guy, I don't. He's talking about he broke up with his chick, and then he starts going, "I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo." And I was just like, "What do you say, Han Solo?" And every time the song came on, which, like I said, was like every 15 minutes, man, I just started going, "I'm Han Solo. I'm <laughs> Han Solo." And they still, when that song comes on, like uh. Ange and uh, Mary Ellen, they both, um, they'll, they'll, they'll call me up when the song comes on. And, like, the phone will ring, it'll be like, you know, oh, Mary Ellen's calling me, and I'll pick up, I'll pick up the phone, and it's, I'm Han Solo, I'm Han Solo. <laughs> uh, that's good. I've never, I don't know the song. I've never heard it. The, the best thing about this music is uh, aggravating Angela with it, though. Yeah. Like, there's that guy, Akon. Sure. I know the that name. This is... Yeah, this is probably the first time I've actually used his name. I keep calling him Acorn just because, you know, it used to make her crazy. Now she ignores me, but it used to make her crazy. I'd be like, who's that? Is that that Acorn guy? Are these your beats? Is, is this your jam? Is this 
Is this acorn? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's very fun. Yeah, I, I couldn't pick us fit one of his songs out. Yeah, me a, either. Yeah, from a lineup, I don't know anything about that. Jen, Jen is subjected to all of these. Come from her from work. Now the kids, she tries to play her own music, and the kids are like, "What is this garbage you're playing?" And she dies a little inside. She says, "Uh huh." It's like with movies. You know, the, the kids today will never see Bill and Ted, and she feels that that's just a tragedy. You never see the Goonies. And I have to agree. I was recently wearing. I wore to work um, one of my uh, T-shirts that's reminiscent of Blade Runner. Mm. It was a. Um, it's a fake beer ad label kind of shirt. Okay. And it's some sort of Blade Runner beer, and it had uh, Eddie James almost on it, huh. um, or like a picture of him. I got it from a shirt woot. Okay. And um, so someone at work was asking me, they're like, well, you know, what's that supposed to be? And I'm just like, oh, it's like a fake beer thing for like, you know, the movie Blade Runner. They're like Blade Runner, like a new movie? And I'm like, no, nah, it's like an old movie. And they're like, like what? Like, you know, who, who's in it? And I said, you know, Harrison Ford, Eddie James almost. And they were just like, oh, Harrison Ford, I kind of know who that is, right? And uh, they were like, so it's old? And I said, yeah. They're like, what, like 2004? I was like, no, like 1980. And they both jumped back and they were like, whoa. They had color 1980? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, 1980, man. It's a great movie. Go see it. Shit. Thanks for making me feel old. Those weren't silent pictures in 1980s. <laughs> we started calling them talkies about then. <laughs> Especially that Blade Runner, the you know that was a talkie because they had the Harrison Ford like terrible voiceover. Oh yeah. Wow. Poor Harrison Ford. Yeah, and he James almost before he became a Stand by Me guy or um, Bill Adama. Right. Right. I forgot he was even in that. It oh yeah. Fir- it was the first DVD I ever bought. I bought it before I even had my DVD player. Blade Runner. Yeah. Excellent. I'm sure now it's out in seven different special editions and better picture and Blu-ray. And... Yeah, I think I have at least three editions. Yeah. I've got the original cut, the director's cut, and um, and a videotape, actually. I don't know what the videotape is because I haven't been able to watch it in years, but I do have it on video. So I have two DVDs and I have the video. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like the Star Wars movies. They just keep getting more and more copies. I kind of like that, though. I don't have an issue with it. No. You know, the director's cut's good because uh, it cuts out the Harrison Ford uh, voiceover, which he right. hated. I know he did. I, I know. I've, I've, I think I saw the document. I saw some documentary. Read something. Yeah, it, it's terrible because he did it terrible on purpose, thinking, like, you know. They would leave it if out, I'm, really. Exactly, yeah. It's like he figured, I'm going to just record this, like, in such a shitty way that they're just going to have to be like, man, Harrison Ford fucked us. We'll have to keep it out. And they were just like, hey, yeah, you, th- you think you're clever, Harrison Ford? Fuck you. And they, uh, they kept it in. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to know. I mean, it's not cool that they did that to him, but it's interesting. No. Very interesting. You know who else is really old who's going to be in new movies? I saw a preview yesterday for a Bruce Willis spy movie where he's like an old, old Red. dude, retired FBI or retired CIA guy. That thing looks Red. really cool. Yeah. That's uh, based on Warren Ellis's graphic novel. I fucking love Warren Ellis. Really? Yeah, I've been I've been waiting for this movie to come out. I'm gonna see this one in the theater, to be it, sure. It really looked good in the preview. Really, I uh, I think it's gonna do well. Yeah, you should check out the graphic novel if you're into that. You know, I don't know if you're really into the graphic novels thing, but I try. it was pretty good. You know, I try. I read Watchmen, and I have I have the Sandman book because I really like Neil Gaiman. But I've no, I haven't read the Sandman book yet. I, I have it, like Volume One, the big, the big fat edition. Right. And uh, um, and the Stephen King, all the Stephen King comic books. In the beginning, I was collecting the comics themselves, uh, all the Dark Tower comic books and the whatever. But um, I stopped buying the comics because there were so damn many of them, and I started buying the graphic novels instead for each series. Right. And I, and I read the first couple, and then I buy them anyway. But there's something else that's on the shelf. It's hard for me to get into them. I've never been into comics like you were. Yeah, I love the comics. I don't collect them as much anymore, though, because, you know, they, they are expensive. Sure. Um, now I just read them at Barnes & Noble. That's cool. You know, when the graphic novel comes out, I go to Barnes & Noble. I sit there, I read it. Well, yeah, that's, that works. Why not? They're short enough. It's like, it's like they expect people to go in and read books, but that's a much better idea in my, in my eyes. Absolutely. I mean, if I start making some... 
better money again like I was when I was working at Costco. I could see myself starting to buy comics again, but at the moment, I just, yeah, I can't afford it. Sure. And, you know, I can read them for free and drink coffee. Oh, that works. That's awesome. It's kind of like, you know, with the, the Nook, they're selling that the ebook reader. Yep. And uh, they let you, if you're reading it, if you read it there, uh, if you use your Nook there, you could read any book while you're in the store reading it. Any right. book for you can sit there for as long as you want and read on the ebook reader, like as if you picked the book up off the shelf. Hear that, mom? <laughs> yeah, it's as if you picked it up. But I, I don't know. It's one of those weird things where you gotta spend time and, like Jen was saying to me the other day, we don't go to the bookstore often enough anymore. And I was like, well, I don't buy books. I I download all my books. I was like, you want to go to the bookstore? That's fine. But this is not. We don't get to sit together. But it's too busy to ever, you know, sit with each other while we're reading. You know, there's, there's couches or, or chairs, and uh, you got to fight for, you got to hover until someone gets up, you know. I mean, there's a little coffee shop that you can sit in an uncomfortable wooden chair. Right. And, and I can see doing it for a small amount of time. I know you do, like, once a week you go and do that sort of thing. And yeah, I can please. see doing it. But, you know, we have a kid, and I read my books on my, on my iPad, and, you know, anyway. Yeah, we got we got my mom a nook for her birthday. Did you? John and I did. Yes. So um, and she she seems to really enjoy it. And um, I you know I when I said, did you hear that, mom? She she replied yes in the chat room. I don't know if she knew that before, but she does now. So maybe she'll go and sit at Barnes and Noble, like I used to, and she'll sit there and she'll just read books. Yeah, it's a good way to preview stuff. Sure. Yeah. Speaking of books, I, you know we probably should get going momentarily. Yeah. But I do want to say I have uh, I finally picked up yesterday Under the Dome. Ah, awesome. Yes, I finally picked that up. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, I'm about 80 pages into it, and so far I'm digging it. Excellent. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It starts off really quick, too. It starts off with a bang right in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. No build-up. No. It's got a lot of middle. You know, you, you got the exciting beginning, and then there's a lot of story in the middle there, but but cool. And then, you know, it ends, it ends well. It was a good one. Jen, it was one of the ones that Jen actually read. She only reads them when, when she really catches interest in them. Right. And, you know, uh, this was one of the ones that she picked up and liked a lot. So, yeah, so since uh, we're just about done here, maybe you want to do some... You do the plugs. Last time we both did plugs on top of each other. I think we should stick to one of us doing the plugs per week. So you can do the plugs this week. What kind of plugs do you want me to like? Our, our websites? Yeah, plug the sites, like, the Twitter, uh, that sort of thing. Like the notthesshow.com, which uh, if, if you're watching us now, you're watching us on notthesshow.com. If you're not watching us live now, you can watch us live on notthesshow.com every Saturday at uh, Sunday, excuse me, every Sunday at 8. With the exception of Halloween. We're going to be doing a Halloween show in three weeks because Sunday falls on Halloween, correct, Joe? Yes. And the show, I think we're going to do 9 to 11. Although that's not finalized, but I think this way anyone who's got to take their kids trick-or-treating can, can watch the show. It's going to be a two-hour show, which, you know, could go longer. We went an hour and a half today at least. Mm -hmm. um, you can catch Ojoey at the, the ojoey.com. You're the ojoey.com, right? Yes. Not, that's the problem with the, with the bookmarks is I never remember what they are. <laughs> and one of my blogs is uh, the, the fucking internets dot, no, just fucking internets dot net. You can follow the the, uh, the not the show Twitter feed at not the show. O Joey at, at not uh, at O Joey and uh, me at, at Dharma Bob on the uh, on the Twitter feeds. And we have the Facebook page. Yeah, the Facebook page. You can, the link you can get there from the. Uh, yeah, you can. From the site can, or something. Can you get there from the site? Uh, Have maybe, I set that up yet? Maybe you haven't. I mean, it's not. You know, <laughs> it's one of those things. We'll get to. We'll, we'll get. We'll tweak things. You can yes, subscribe we, um, to us from the site on iTunes. There's yes, we're, we're on iTunes now. Yeah, there's a link. There's a link there that subscribes to you. There's also links to subscribe to us on regular RSS feeds if you're more into that. Right. And you could always come to the site and watch the video live. You just come there and you go to the live section. You push play and you see the most recent episode. Or from the blog page, if you select download um, from the actual blog page. Um, Joe sets up the um, what is the the what do they call it? I can't recall what it's called now. The special edition. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, enhanced. What? Enhanced podcast. Thank you, enhanced. I knew it was an E word. Yeah. The enhanced podcast, Joe, Joe makes it special for you. And that's pretty fun to watch as well. Yeah. I think we're going to have to prune down these plugs. There's too many of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to see the plugs, man, they're on the website, everybody. Yeah. Everything's on the website. You can reach us all there. And I think we're going to go out with. Uh, the We're, obits again, the lights we can, lights we crude. Lights we crude. You can find the link uh, later on this week. You'll find the link if you want to buy that song. Buy that song. Go and buy it. And uh, see you next week. See you next week, guys. From Florida. <laughs>